So recently I've been going through a bunch of my old things and I found this packet of paper labeled my summer book reviews, which I believe I wrote around the age of 12, maybe 13. I thought they were kind of funny and so I figured I would read these book reviews that I wrote in like 8th grade or so. Chicken Soup for the Teenage Soul. A very touching and heartfelt collection of stories. I really enjoy chicken soup books and this one was just as satisfying. That's true, I do remember reading those books a lot when I was a kid. The Ghost of Cutler Creek. Another great story with Allie Nichols and her ghosts. I like this series, except that Allie is a pathetic goody two-shoes and a big chunk of the story was totally unbelievable. A letter sent to Allie Nichols, Seneca, New York, would not go through. It doesn't have a real address on it, and so they would have to look up her address. Okay, this wouldn't work because Allie's last name was spelled wrong, and she's a minor anyway. Her parents would be the ones listed, not her. Besides, the post office wouldn't even try to find her anyway. They would just send the letter back to the writer. Okay. <laughs> Apparently I had some beef with uh, a certain detail of this book, but um, it's actually funny that this is in here because literally a couple days ago I was at a friend's house and I saw um, The Ghost of Fossil Glen on their bookshelf and I was like, ah, I loved those books! The Shadow Thieves. Great book. I loved it tons. It had plenty of humor, mystery, and educational stuff. I loved the ending and I can't wait for the next installments of the trio. Plus, my copy of the book was signed. How cool is that? It's actually true. Hold on a sec. I'm gonna go get it. I still have this book and it is signed to me. And then I have since acquired the second book. I think it is a trilogy, um, but I haven't read this yet. I think I've just been meaning to start the series over again and maybe read this one again and then this one and then get the third one too. How to Eat Fried Worms. This book was interesting. It was pretty old so the characters were different than boys nowadays. A very interesting topic but I was disgusted to say the least. Not the greatest book out there. Chicken Soup for the Teenage Soul 2. Another great book full of soulful stories that I really enjoyed reading. <laughs> My Mom and Other Mysteries of the Universe. This book was somewhat intriguing, but not particularly grasping. I was glad, though, that it did not follow suit of so many other books and have the protagonist lose her best friend over her conflict. That has really been used too many times. The plotline of this book was somewhat disappointing. So, apparently, I liked one plot aspect, but the rest of it was still terrible. Okay. <laughs> the Face on the Milk Carton. Excellent story. The idea is so unique, yet overly used at the same time. I have no idea what I meant by that. Janie's character got a little annoying at times, but it was still a great book. I put the sequels on hold of the library right after I finished it. Burning Up. This book was very, very good. The mystery was humongously easy for me to solve, though. Nonetheless, I really liked this book. Perfect. A good book. It was pretty average. It blends in well with all the other books I've read over the years, and the only thing that stands out about it is the cover. It had a very pretty cover. The character Ashley Barnum was interesting to read about, too. So it's another book that, weirdly enough, like a week ago, I saw this book at Goodwill and I was like, whoa, I've actually read this. Like, lo and behold, I have a review of it here. <laughs> Code Orange. An extremely gripping book. Code Orange had me practically yelling out loud at Mitty, telling him what to do and who to trust. I loved the climax of this book and the concept was very intriguing. I only wish it hadn't been so graphic about the smallpox. Ew. I totally remember reading this book and really loving it. I read so much Carol and B. Cooney book. Anyway. The Amber Cat. As the sequel to Dog Friday, I was very pleased. Hilary Mackay is a great author and I love all of her characters. This book brought up a whole new side to ghosts and I loved it. Sundance was just great in this book as well. Dark. Ha. I, I, I don't know what that last sentence was, but Amber Cat is totally one of like my all-time favorite childhood books. Hilary Mackay. Top five favorite childhood authors, probably. 
I'm going to be famous. I own this book and I read it often and it never fails to make me laugh. I love Arlo's imagination and the whole banana thing was awesome. If you don't know what this book is about, it's about this guy who tries to um, beat the world record for the fastest banana eating. And I've read this book so many times because I had it on audiobook. The best Christmas pageant ever. Another happy little book I enjoy reading often, along with the best school year ever. The Herdmans are such wonderful characters, you just love reading about them. It was another audiobook that I owned, and so I listened to it all the time. Whatever happened to Janie? Finally, the books come from the library! This one was good, but definitely my least favorite of the series. I couldn't stand how neither Janie nor her new family could be understanding of one another. Totally agree with that review. The Voice on the Radio. In this one, you just want to stab Reed, but you feel pitifully sorry for him too. The ending was somewhat cliffhangerish, though. Another great installment, nonetheless. What Janie Found. A great book, but I hated how they wrapped up Hannah like that. I totally agree. I was actually really curious about these books um, after reading these reviews. I think that there's a fifth and final one that I never read, so I really need to do that. Freeze Tag. This story was excellent, but ponderable. I've heard that there could be a sequel, and I hope there is. You don't really figure out who the, how the characters end up. I don't remember anything about that book at all. Okay. Mummy. This book was so crazy. I couldn't believe how freakish Donovan ended up to be. The ending was absolutely screaming for a sequel! Before I read this review, I reference Breathing Lessons, which is a book by Ann Tyler that I also read. Flash Fire. This book took me a super long time to plod through just like breathing lessons and the whole book was telling what was happening over the course of one day just like breathing lessons but i really liked the book when i was done with it just like breathing lessons except for the fact that i wanted it to have a happier ending just like breathing lessons I don't really remember reading that one either driver's ed i loved this book remy and morgan were great characters and they were interesting to follow throughout their enormous dilemma they really messed themselves up over it though. <laughs> I remember this one too. I liked it. Another Caroline B. Goody. Fatality. I found this to be very interesting and a page turner. It bugged me to no end that you don't find out what, what the important entry is until the end. I did not predict the murderer though. I almost always figure it out before the protagonist does so this surprised me a little bit. Olivia Kidney. What a great book. It had so much imagination and amazing characters. I loved how everything linked together. Uh, that's another series that I don't think I have finished. Might have to look that one up. Pish Posh. I got this book after reading Olivia Kidney and it was great. I loved the concept of Audrey splintering away and Amber was a very funny character even though I do not believe in past lives. <laughs> Wanted. This book literally had me shaking. My friend Anna recommended it for me and I am so glad she did. I predicted who the evil rotten murderer was and loved how it, that turned out. This book probably had one of my least favorite villains of all time in it. I don't remember this book at all. What Child Is This? A Christmas Story. A very sweet story about Christmas. Katie was such a lovable character and the end turned out just how I knew it would. And finally, 15. Okay, I guess, but it was just so boring, and it was old, so they kept saying swell all the time, and the girls wear dresses non-stop. The thing that really ticked me off was the fact that Jane babysat for an hour and a half and got paid 75 cents. What? That is the most pathetic thing I've ever heard! 50 cents an hour! I would have gotten $10 for babysitting for an hour and a half. That's my review of 15, another book I do not remember anything about, but apparently I didn't like it very much. I really wish that I had kept track of books that I read when I was younger, but as far as I know, this is actually the only record I have until I got a Goodreads, but that was after I even graduated high school, so I don't even know what books I was reading in high school. I mean, I do, but not completely. But yeah, that was fun. I was really glad when I found that.